forces from Bridgewater who have passed. Um, in addition, I think uh, it's only appropriate today uh, to make note of the events uh, being reported from the state of Texas. Um, and I think that we should extend our thoughts to uh, the victims of gun violence in Texas and their families. If you would kindly join me in a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Uh, the first item on our agenda this evening is approval of minutes from our previous meeting on May 10th, 2022. Uh, I would entertain a motion. So moved, I'll second. It's been moved, moved, uh, so moved and seconded. And uh, uh, this evening, this action, and I think all of our measures will be conducted by voice vote. Uh, so I'll ask all those in favor to say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none. Thank you very much. Announcements. I do have one announcement this evening uh, to members of the council that I will by email request from each member uh, input as to uh, your personal preferences concerning committee assignments. And I ask the councilors please respond uh, to my request in writing as soon as possible, but uh, prior to our next meeting on June 7th. Uh, counselors should be especially mindful of the time commitment uh, expected and required in connection with your committee assignments. And um, uh, please be, um, be sure to be reasonably uh, confident of your ability to uh, schedule meetings as appropriate to meet the needs of the council and to appear at meetings uh, as called. That will follow. Thank you very much. Proclamations. Uh, there are none this evening. We move on to item D, Citizen Open Forum. Uh, I would ask that any citizens who wish to address the council, uh, you may do so at this time. If you would kindly step forward to the podium, introduce yourself and um, state your name and your street and kindly limit your remarks to three minutes. Yes, please go right ahead. Sam Baumgarten, 60 Short Street. Good evening, everyone. First, uh, I want to express thanks to all of you, the council members, for your support of the Pride flag and the Juneteenth flag raisings. These events are important in reaffirming Bridgewater as a community which welcomes and celebrates diversity and inclusion. Moreover, I also want to thank the behind the scenes helpers, such as town clerk, Mrs. Hunt, your facilities manager, Chris Hartman, and others in the town manager's office who have helped with the logistics for these events coming up. And the first one is next Wednesday at 3.30, Pride Flag. Second, I wish to recommend a positive vote on the resolution supporting the fair share amendment, which is on the statewide ballot this fall. I'm very pleased that this is being brought out of subcommittee for consideration by the full council. A positive view, a view sorry, a positive vote will add a strong voice to the statewide effort to get the amendment passed, resulting in increased funding for public education, repair and maintenance of roads, bridges, and public transportation. I learned just yesterday that to date, 14 cities, 15 school committees, and eight town meetings have voted positively for the amendment statewide, and also just learned that the towns of New Bedford and Fall River are also on board, so more communities are voting yes. Uh, I hope we can add Bridgewater to that list. So I thank you, as always, for your service to the town and your consideration of this request. Thank you, Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, any other citizens who would care to address? Yes. Good evening. My name is Shirley Krasinski, and I live at 510 Auburn Street. And I am here to, uh, to read a letter into the record, if I may, which I guess is going to happen. And this is a letter that I sent to President Chase um, 
Dear Mr. Chase, in early June of 2021, emails between myself representing the Bridgewater Improvement Association Tree Committee and Mr. Dutton regarding establishment of a town tree board were exchanged but not concluded. There hasn't been anything further on this issue. Therefore, I'm asking the town council to act on the establishment of a tree board with the following suggested membership. Two members of the BIA tree committee, the, the uh, Bridgewater tree warden, one member of the Bridgewater planning board, the superintendent of DPW, <clears throat> the head of the highway department, a member of the Bridgewater Conservation Commission, and a member of the town staff with expertise in tree management if such expertise is not available already on the said committee. Specific tasks for the tree board were established in a memorandum of understanding regarding trees on municipal property. Along with the membership identified above, and that was dated in April, 2021, but it does not include trees located on property to be developed and other issues. Considering global mandates on carbon reduction, it is important now more than ever that Bridgewater address this issue. A variety of town entities, departments, and boards are already working on various aspects of tree management. They include the planning board, the Department of Community and Economic Development, and the BIA, as well as the nascent tree fund currently holding contributions from developers. As a member of the Improvement Association Tree Committee, I request you officially establish a town tree board with a staff person to bring the members together and unite these branches under one canopy, pun intended, at your earliest opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Krasinski. Yes. My name is Ray Ajemian, 221 Aldridge Road. I'm also a member of the planning board and I will speak regarding the planning board, but I'm speaking for myself. The board is not, the board is not voted to um, have me here. I'm speaking as an individual on the planning board. And this is sort of a follow-up to Shirley's uh, comment. In two and a half years ago, we had a, a developer come before us to build a solar farm diagonally across from um, Prisco's place on 18. In the process, they intended to cut down nine to 10 acres of trees. And as we were talking about it, it occurred to me, if you're gonna cut down 19, nine or 10 acres of trees, that's probably not good in terms of the climate and on terms of the bridge water. And so I asked the developer if they would be willing to deposit in the town's treasury a sum of money to offset the trees. In other words, that we would be able to thus use the money to plant trees elsewhere in town. They agreed to give us $76,000 before they cut one tree down. Now that, that did not go through, that the whole development died. We did start a discussion on establishing a tree board though at that time, because if we have money, somebody's gotta be able to spend the money properly for planting and taking care of trees. Since that time, they, we, they, we approved a flex building on the NIP. They gave the town $7,500. It's in the town treasury right now, four trees. We have also approved a um, somewhat of a flex building where that solar farm was going to go on, on 18. It will probably start sometime this summer. Again, prior to um, cutting one tree down, they are to deposit $20,000 for replacement trees in town. It's something the planning board did on its own. In order to move this along, we need a board. It's been two and a half years and we do not have a board. I understand the wheels of government move slowly, but I think we have a couple of flat tires here. And so what we're asking you is to set up, as Shirley said, a subcommittee to come up with the priorities for a tree board. This is not a big deal. Other towns have tree boards. 
and the uh, if you uh, you know you're getting the new um, um, zoning, in the zoning there is a clause to give the planning board the ability to ask to get mitigation for certain things. A lot of cities and towns do that. We simply ask for it. Now, it's not a big deal for large developments. We're not talking about a three or four lot subdivision. When, when the developer for the uh, warehouse on 18, I asked the gentleman prior to approving, and I said, would you be willing to give us some money for trees? And they said, yes. And then we finally approved, I said, how much? He said, 15,000. And I said, how about 20? Yeah, no problem. My point, gentlemen, is we need that tree board. I, I really hope you start this process immediately and get it moving. And Mr. President, can I just hand out to the, or you can pass out, this is the state on tree boards. So you just sort of something you could uh, look sure. at. If you would give that to our council clerk, uh, Mr. Damien. Thank you very much, Mr. Damien. Uh, yes, please go right ahead. Hi, Rebecca Fleisch Cudero, 135 Deerfield Drive. I've been a member of BCCR and co-chair of the Juneteenth Committee this year. The first thing that I wanted to do was to thank you for what I'm hoping is going to happen a little bit later, which is approval of the entertainment license for Juneteenth. And then I also wanted to thank the town council for the support that y'all have extended to us for our flag raisings. As you know, we're having the pride flag raising on June 1st, and I believe um, President Council President Chase is going to speak, and we're going to have the uh, Juneteenth flag raising on June 15th, and I believe Vice President Eric Gore is going to speak. So we're um, very happy about that. We also wanted to thank Town Manager Michael Dutton and um, especially Assistant Town Manager Kimberly Williams, who have both helped us, particularly uh, Kimberly Williams, in our communication, the Juneteenth Committee, with different town departments getting things organized for Juneteenth. It's really been a big help this year to have that. And I also want to thank the new town council clerk, Deborah Ward, who I just got to meet a little bit earlier tonight. She and I have communicated back and forth quite a bit, um, and she's very responsive and very helpful. So I wanted to thank everybody for all of that, all around BCCR and Juneteenth kind of things. In terms of the fair share amendment, I'm also hoping that there'll be full support here from um, the town and from the town council. I didn't know some of the statistics. I just pulled a couple of them out that I'll address very briefly until I read all of the information about the fair share amendment. But I didn't know that those in the top 1% have always paid a smaller share of their income toward taxes. And it seems very unbalanced to me that that's the case. I hadn't been aware of that. Clearly, um, the need for improvement with transportation infrastructure and public education, nobody needs to be lectured about that. We all know that there's a need for that. Um, and the fact that it only creates um, a single additional tax um, on the portion of a person's annual income over $1 million, and that it's going to be adjusted when in terms of inflation every year, so that it will always be that same percentage. All of it seems very fair to me. Um, and I'm, I'm just hoping that y'all will see that the same way and vote in favor of it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mrs. Flesh Cadero. Are there other uh, citizens who care to comment? Seeing none. We'll move on to um, item E, appointments. There are no appointments to be considered this evening. We can move directly to the single public hearing we have scheduled tonight. Uh, the time is now 718, and I'll call to order the public hearing uh, to consider order FY23-006, uh, community preservation uh, reserve accounts. Uh, I'll defer to the town manager for comment. Thank you, Mr. President. This uh, is simply the annual budget, essentially the annual budget for the uh, community preservation funds. And uh, as you can see, it, uh, it's a total of a, a little over a million dollars, uh, 300, uh, the, I should say the community um, uh, preservation committee is recommending this budget and it uh, calls for $307,500 for open, open space funding, 153,750 for historic resources, 
102,500 for housing, 25,900 uh, as budgeted reserves, uh, 345,000 to pay uh, the debt associated with the, the academy building, and 50,350 for uh, the debt associated with the Keith Homestead. Um, and this is a little different than in prior years. The Community Preservation Committee has chosen to uh, increase certain line items above the required 10% um, for each of the three buckets, so to speak, um, and is funding administrative expenses at 5% um at forty thousand dollars so so that is uh that is essentially the budget but i'm certainly happy to answer any questions so uh, thank you very much mr town manager uh i would firstly ask if there are general questions from the public as to this order proposed and seeing none would anyone from the public care to speak in favor of this action I see none. Any member of the public who is here to speak in opposition to this order? And finally, are there questions from the town councilors? Yes, Mr. Wood. Not necessarily a question. I'll just point out that budget and finance should have had this on the agenda for tonight, but it was uh, mistakenly left off. So tonight we can't vote on this item, but if we, um, you can decide to leave the hearing open or close the hearing, but uh, if we can push the vote off till our next meeting, um, budget and finance can discuss it in between. Uh, thank you. I note that fact that the budget and finance committee did not uh, uh, consider this measure, although the um, finance committee did uh, and approved a five to nothing uh, to recommend. Uh, is it your uh, motion that the public hearing be continued at our next session? I think the public hearing can probably be closed. All right. And then we just have to postpone the vote itself. All right, thank you. Are there any other comments or questions from the councilors? No, seeing none. Uh, I, would, uh, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none. And I'll make the motion to postpone the vote until our next regular meeting. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to postpone the vote until the until our next uh, regular meeting. Is that correct? Correct. Thank second. you. Any any uh, discussion about that? No. Further. Then we'll have a voice vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No one. Thank you very much that we will contend with the uh, approval of that uh, matter next session. And our next meeting is on uh, June 7th. We have, a, um, we have one license uh, transaction to consider this evening, and that is the granting of a one day entertainment permit um, to be, um, which has been requested in connection with um, the Juneteenth celebration that has been previously alluded to by public comment. Uh, the transaction is identified as petition P 2022-021, the granting of a one day entertainment permit, Bridgewater Community for Civil Rights, Juneteenth celebration, 50 School Street, which will take place on June 18th. Uh, I would uh, consider a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, we have motion for approval and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you very much. That is unanimous. Uh, presentations. We do have a presentation this evening from, um, from the council uh, vice president, uh, Councilor Eric Moore, uh, who will discuss the uh, proposed strategic tracker for um, uh, matters before the council. I'll turn it over to Councillor Moore. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So for everyone with an agenda, if you turn to the page that has the Excel spreadsheet, you can sort of follow along. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have the ability to project, uh, but it is in the agenda, the public agenda as well. Um, so on behalf of strategic planning, uh, I wanted to socialize a new tool 
Uh, we can use this tool for tracking town initiatives and also the status of any ordinances that the town council brings forward. Uh, and if you like the idea, I'd ask for your support uh, in a workshop setting, helping me get the right content into the tracker to start. Um, and then after that, to formalize this as part of the town council process as part of a resolution. Uh, so both of those things would be follow up to today's meeting. Today is just about socializing the tool itself. Um, so why don't we dive in? So before I, I talk about the tool, I actually wanna talk about the issues that I think it solves. Um, the first is, you know, over the course of a year or many years, many items come before this council. And when they're in front of us, they're top of mind and we're tracking them. As they start to work their way through the system, we potentially can lose track or maybe lose um, uh, sort of, that they fall out of the discussion. So the goal is that we could, with a tool, maybe keep things top of mind that are important for the town. Um, the other issue that I think we have is new items tend to quickly bump old items. So when something uh, comes before the council, we, we sort of redirect our focus to that. And especially for someone who's new to the council, they might not even know that there was something started in the previous session uh, that they should be tracking. Um, I think there's also another concern. I saw this, I had reached out to the community. I think people saw earlier this year talking about uh, the potential of creating some videos to help people understand how town government worked. One of the big things people asked for is actually like, what is the town doing? Where do I go to find out all of the initiatives that the town council is supporting? And when I thought about that, I thought about the reality for somebody to track the work happening in Bridgewater, they have to attend a half dozen meetings a week. They have to create their own tracker. Week over week, they have to try to log, you know, get an update and, and sort of follow, follow the status of those items over time. Very difficult for residents to know what we're working on and the status of what we're working on. And I think the last thing, um, you know, if we think about town goals and the work we're doing to set the vision for the town, um, and somebody is trying to execute against that vision, and they're looking at a list of 60 projects that we have going on, it might be hard for someone who's deciding what to work on tomorrow to know what to actually work on tomorrow. And so a list like this could help us set priorities for the town uh, as a council to help people make work and funding decisions. Um, so with that, uh, I'm proposing essentially two spreadsheets. The spreadsheets are actively maintained by us. They could be maintained by the strategic planning committee, um, but ordered and supported by the full council. Uh, the first spreadsheet is a, is a list of initiatives. So these are big things in the town that as a council, uh, we are supporting or we're watching progress on. In some cases, there, there are things we've spent a lot of money on. And over time, we track the budget, but we don't always track the original promise or the original reason that we did the project. And so this tracker would allow us to just keep a list of all of these things and remember what outcome we expected to get when we approved it. So when we get to the end and we check it off the list, we can say, you know, did we actually, did we actually achieve the goal there? So that's the first list, that's the initiative tracker. There's about 20 things on there that were submitted by the strategic planning committee and we had some discussion on there. Clearly there's information we still need to fill in, um, but there might be more items that you submit through a workshop. The second list is just a list of ordinances, resolutions and orders that uh, come to us or are presented by us and end up going out into committees. And this allows us to track the progress and age of those actions over time. Um, and so for example, one of the items uh, that is in my committee is the charter changes uh, we often get questions, where are those? Have we made progress on them? What's the status? And the hope is with a spreadsheet like this, someone could just look at it and say, oh, you know, this has been out there for a while. How can I help? Or they can see that we've made progress and it's waiting on some, some milestone. So those are the two things. It's the initiative tracker and essentially the town council activity tracker. And my hope is through the workshop, we agree on the contents um, through the resolution we agree to use it. And then by including it in the agenda each week, we use it as a communication vehicle back to the residents. So I'd ask for your support uh, in follow-up activities for, for those things. Thank you so much, Councillor. I, uh, I appreciate very much your work in this regard. I'm also a member of the uh, Strategic Planning Committee, and I know 
from our meetings that um, you've devoted a great deal of time and attention to the development of this tracker. And I think that it absolutely captures so many of the uh, uh, so many of the of the particular initiatives or legislation that we sometimes lose track of. Uh, and um, I think it's an important um, uh, potential tool. Um, so your, if I understand your uh, initial uh, inclination would be to hold a workshop to uh, better familiarize the council with the tool and seek more input. That's correct. I, I think there are probably three pieces of feedback that I'd be looking for in a workshop. The first is the tool itself. Are there any tweaks to the format? The second are the rows in the tool. Are we tracking the right things? And if people are aware of other projects that should be on there or things that are on there maybe are incorrectly represented, we wanna correct that. And the third and maybe the most important is to take that long list of 30 things and pick the top five. So as a, as a council, um, determine what, what are the most important things for the town that people should be acting on. That's the hope for the workshop. Thank you. Other uh, other questions or comments from the councilors? Uh, yes, Councilor Gallagher. Um, no, thank you, Mr. President. Um, no, thank you, uh, Council Moore, for for bringing this to the council as we discussed in in committee. Um, I think it's good to have this because you know we all recommend and put things forward, and sometimes we <laughs> forget, <laughs> like oh, we're, whatever happened to that type thing? And I think this this type of a matrix uh, certainly you know gives us an idea as to where it is, where it's going and what the disposition likely or likely not may be. I didn't, I see my name on here a lot. I didn't think I, I didn't think I was working that hard. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, some of these things we know take time and, and have to get, you know, you know, some uh, legal review and require executive sessions and things like that. So I'm looking forward to having a workshop so we can, um, set some priorities on some of these to make sure we move some of these forward and have a goal of achieving X number of things each year or so forth, yeah, so so thank you. Thank you, Councilor Gallagher. Are there any other questions? Yes, uh, Councilor Perry. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, again, I, I, I like the look of it as well. I think it's a great, you know, summary and overview just to kind of see what's pending. Uh, that's great for all of us here on the council. I look forward to, uh, discussing it more uh, under our workshop situation, um, ideas on, again, how to, how to use it, how to post it and things of that nature. But uh, topically, it looks really good and I'd be in favor of uh, seeing this go forward. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. It seems to me that the, um, we may have learned this evening that the uh, issue of a tree board may be an item that might need to be uh, added to uh, the template at this point. All right, if there are no further questions or comments from the council, we can proceed to um, the town manager's report. And the first item A is a re-precincting update. And I would defer to the town manager. Thank you, Mr. President. I will uh, in turn defer to the town attorney. <laughs> Lucky me. Uh, so uh, as you all know, we submitted everything in a very timely fashion, I, I think. And um, we had submitted it up to the state house to both our state senator and our state representative. Um, and it was the full package with the charter changes and all the associated um, orders and ordinances that needed to go along with those charter changes to kind of make them work in concert. Um, and we hadn't heard anything back uh, for some time though, I will say, uh, when I did submit them, I did have a conversation with our state rep just saying, you know, obviously time is of the essence. We're operating kind of past uh, the time when this was supposed to be turned over in terms of our council. Um, and they had indicated to me that they're pretty backlogged. So our town clerk had reached out to them last week, I believe on Wednesday, um, and she copied me on the email and then also copied me on the response. And essentially they're saying the same thing. So basically they've called uh, to see kind of where we are in the queue, see what's going on and they haven't gotten really a response from anyone. Um, so we're, we're sitting in the queue. Uh, apparently there is many uh, municipalities that are find themselves in the same position as us. Um, I think unfortunately 
a lot went on during the same time period that all these towns were trying to potentially make charter changes and we need to do the re-precincting. Um, so we're, we're just sitting there at this point. Um, I have nothing further to update other than that. Um, we, I can tell you that everyone from the town's perspective has done everything they can to push this along. You all did a great job making uh, the ordinances and getting them through the process as quickly as humanly possible. But we don't know when we're going to get to things. Um, they had said, uh, I'm trying to find the email now. I think there was some indication that they're saying they have several other pending uh, matters or legislation that date as far back as the middle of last year. Um, so depending on what those things are and the priorities of the state house of what they're going to push before what, um, it could be a while. So we're kind of maintaining the status quo. I wouldn't expect it to change anytime soon, um, but certainly we'll stay on top of it. I know our town clerk definitely emailed them this past week. Um, I was on the email and they responded. So that's what we've heard so far. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Rollins. Uh, are there any uh, questions from the council? Yes, Councilor Guy, I will go. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, through you to the town attorney, if you could, uh, Jason, um, I too spoke with Senator Pacheco recently, who's still our state senator, at least until January, yeah. <laughs> then everything changes. But, um, and he exactly said exactly what you said is like, he, in, in essence, he said, there are others ahead of you. Yeah. And I'm like, well, the, the point that I tried to make with him is that I'm just, you said that the charter changes are up there. I mean, the only thing that I'm looking at is the change that will allow us to change the makeup of the council. Are there other things with that up there pending or just the change with the council? No, it's, it's okay. all, if you recall, okay. it, it's, it all has to do with that. Okay. But if you recall, there were actually several ordinances that were packaged together because we had to change different sections so that the interplay worked. Right. Um, but, but all these, like this matrix that Councillor Moore presented, he talks about charter changes that haven't gone up there yet. Too. Those are different. Okay. That's okay. a different all notion right. altogether. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no. So, but there was a package of charter changes that you all um, did approve that kind of all worked together to make sure that any, what we did was we took kind of the general premise of the charter change when changing the makeup of you all. And then we went back through the charter and said, okay, what needs to be changed to make sense with that? And those are the ordinances that are up there. There's nothing else pending there none of the the other stuff recommended by the charter review committee or anything like that's up there I, sitting I, I thought that the only thing per, uh, in a rush really was to allow us to have an election of our new counselors but that's in with a few other things then yeah but they're all related to the same idea yeah yeah i mean and, and she's right i mean the i mean it's i don't know how many other Towns are waiting for changes so they can have an election, but we are, and I think we're very one of the few. And I explained that to Senator Pacheco, and the really, I mean, we have people that are, are serving that terms have expired. However, our our charter takes care of that. Yeah. However, I, they're not here tonight either. So I think we've had. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I think I think I've had that conversation with our state rep. I think um, our town clerk has had that conversation with them. I think we're all doing what we can do from our perspective. I don't blame them. I just think it's the way the committees up there work. It's I think like, so. It, it's just, yeah. but anyway. I think so. Th thank you for the update. Yeah, yeah. no problem. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> Vice President Moore. Follow up through you to the town attorney. Um, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but what, what is the activity that they actually need to do? Is someone there I, I doing think, it? Is, like what? Yes. What so I, I think what they're probably, and I'm just guessing, I have, I have no idea. I haven't talked to them about the specific action. Um, but I think what they're doing is they just have all of these things lined up to get into the queue to essentially get to a committee or somewhere else before then it goes to the larger body, right? And I, and I think they only are taking up a certain number of these things at a time. And so I think it's just sitting in essentially a queue before they can start taking these things up one at a time. I mean, I really think it's as simple as that. And when, and when we say take it up. Like get into a committee, start looking at it, have a report done, you know, and then work its way through the full legislative process. Yeah, thanks. 
Uh, yes, Councillor Perry. Thank you. Uh, and again, just to, for discussion, um, does the uh, do they meet less over the summer? So potentially, may this get drawn on to the fall? I would week? expect this to be drawn on to the fall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So just to let the public know, it, I didn't. I didn't. Not happen until fall time because they meet less in the summer. <laughs> Got to get reelected. <laughs> <laughs> when we when we first submitted this, I. I had the idea that in a good case scenario, I'd look at the winter, like, yeah. and that's in a good case. That's really how I felt all along. I mean, I think, especially with charter changes, they're, they are dealing with so many different things and a charter change is unique to one particular municipality and not the whole state, right? So they prioritize things based on that sometimes. It's just kind of the nature of it. That's what I thought. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, further questions or comments from the councilors? Uh, seeing none, I, I thank you all, and uh, I thank you, Attorney Rollins. No uh, if we could move on to item B in the town manager's report, a water update. Um, this has been uh, requested by Councillor Moore, and I would ask if the um, uh, town manager would kindly uh, address that issue. Thank you, Mr. President. I certainly will. Uh, I think uh, over the course of the year, mostly in the uh, spring, summer, and fall, we get a number of complaints about discoloration in the water. Um, we get a certain number of complaints, actually not, not a huge number of complaints given the um, number of users we have, but, but I know there are a lot of social media comments on, on the discoloration of the water um, and that's just the way it is. But the, uh, the cause of that, so people know, the cause of that is, is the minerals in the water. It's the iron and the manganese that is naturally occurring in the water. It's not uh, something that's uh, a poisonous uh, substance, uh, but it is naturally occurring in the water. Um, it is particularly triggered, I can tell you, when we flush uh, water hydrants, uh, fire hydrants, uh, that, will, that will cause uh, some temporary discoloration. It's also caused by uh, construction work. Uh, when, when pipes are replaced or when new pipes are put in, uh, water is rerouted or water is um, turned off for a period of time. Once it's turned back on, that, that does cause some discoloration. It can actually also be caused by um, activation of certain pumps uh, or certain wells rather, town wells. So that when we activate uh, certain wells, if they've been sitting dormant for, for a season, uh, that can also cause a little bit of discoloration. And we do rotate wells, just so folks know. Um, the question about what we can do about it, uh, again, I, I stress it's not dangerous. Uh, we do tell people not to, you know, once, once a discoloration in the water does happen, uh, let, let the water run, let it, let it get it out of the system, um, certainly before you do a load of white laundry, um, but it will go away uh, over hopefully a relatively short period of time. Um, in terms of, of long-term solution, this is something that's been happening ever since Bridgewater had a water system, uh, but we have, uh, as the council knows and the public may not know, we're coming to the end of the construction cycle for a uh, $18 million water treatment plant, which is designed, among other things, designed specifically uh, to eliminate uh, the high levels of iron and manganese in our water so that, that uh, it will run clearer throughout town. We have a mixed system. We, we have one water treatment plant that treats uh, roughly 60% of our water. Uh, the water plant that's about to, uh, about to come online uh, we'll treat about 40% of the remaining water. And, uh, and it, as I say, it's a mixed system. So, so folks should see um, clearer water. Uh, you will see some discoloration when, when hydrants are opened uh, and, and wells are switched, but it won't be nearly as, as noticeable uh, once that second water plant comes online. That's the good news. Uh, the less good news is that that water treatment plant is, has been delayed. Uh, due to um, supply chain issues. Um, never thought I'd say supply chain issues so many times, uh, but it is, um, we are waiting for controllers for the uh, water treatment plant. Those controllers uh, have been delayed um, for a long time. Um, and now that summer's coming, uh, we can't shut down the wells in order to uh, get the plant up and going. So it, it's going to be delayed uh, into uh, well into the fall. So uh, if not next spring. So, so 
once that uh, plant does come online, you'll see some relief from the discolored water, but that that's where it comes from. Uh, it's not harmful. Um, and, uh, and we have been working on it for, uh, probably the last six or seven years to get the, to the point where we're about to open a water treatment plant. So, so that's, um, essentially the issue, but I'm certainly happy to answer questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dutton. Uh, yes, Councillor Moore. So through you to the town manager. So thank you for the update and the detail. You know, I, I think this is one of those issues where the residents expect us to be great at the basics, you know, so wastewater, drinking water, public safety. Um, and I also think this is one of those issues that has a lot of misperception. So I think when people post on social media, if people haven't heard an update like the one you just gave, they think that there are large parts of Bridgewater that just have brown water all the time. And so I'm really excited to hear the action plan we have to, re to remediate this. I think we benefit also potentially by coupling the action with a little bit of communication, right? To, to try to head off the misperceptions that, that sort of are circulating around this issue. Um, so no, not necessarily a, a specific ask there, but if there's something we can do to actively engage the water customers and the residents so that they understand this plan, we get the message out there, you know, we, we remove any potential alternative messaging that isn't accurate, that would be, that'd be really helpful. That's actually a point very well taken. And I think uh, our plan right now is uh, once we get to um, new water rates that the council will end up voting, uh, we'll put a, a report right in the water bill, the next water bill that says, you know, here's, here's what you're paying for, here's why you're paying for it, um, and here's what the result is going to be uh, long term. So that's a great right. idea. And maybe just as a, I'm oh, sorry. No, no, after you're done, that's fine. <laughs> just as a closing comment, maybe after we make the changes, if there's a way to survey the customers and make sure that the outcome we're expecting actually happened, I expect that it will, but I think it would be a good way to just close the loop in the end. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Councillor Perry. Thank you through to the town manager as well. Uh, and then that vein, I don't know, is it possible to put something like that uh, in print on the town website, maybe under the water department that people can look up and, and get, you know, the specific information, true information that, so there's no uh, confusion. And so. Absolutely. That's, that also is a great idea. And I will, uh, I believe it's on our website already, but if, okay. it, if it is, uh, if it's not, we'll get it there. If it, if it is, we'll uh, post a link to our Facebook page. Yeah, would be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Are there further questions for the town manager? It appears not. We can move on to discussions. There are no discussions scheduled for this evening. Uh, committee reports. Are there any committee reports to be offered tonight? Uh, yes, Councillor Wood. Yeah, I'll, I'll just give you an update for um, budget and finance that met tonight on items LA, LB, and LC. Um, we voted to recommend. You will vote favorably. Yes, to recommend. Oh, thank you very much. E. E's already covered there. It's and the yeah, it, it's noted there that budget and finance already voted two to two to one to recommend. Okay, for I didn't see that. L I didn't see that. E. All right, thank you, Councillor. Uh, <laughs> there is no D though. It's double C. <laughs> it's the C letter missing. <laughs> we have next for consideration um, legislation for action, uh, order FY twenty two dash zero six six, contractual buyouts. And I would um, defer once again, please, to the town manager. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, sorry, let me get there. Uh, the contractual buyouts, we have two employees who are leaving, uh, one retiring, one has left the uh, employment of Bridgewater. And these are um, monies due them uh, upon their departure. Thank you very much, Mr. Dutton. Um, I note that uh, these uh, that the budget and finance and finance committees have uh, voted uh, approval recommendations uh, in connection with this order. Uh, a voice vote will um, uh, be undertaken. Uh, all those uh, motion to approve. Second. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Any discussion? Is there a discussion? <laughs> nothing further. Seeing nothing. Thank you very much. I would uh, ask that all those in favor vote aye. 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 Opposed. 
No one, I thank you very much. Order FY22-068, Contractual Settlement, uh, Bridgewater Firefighters Association. And uh, once again, please to Mr. Dutton. Thank you, Mr. President. So the terms of the, um, the uh, recent uh, bargaining for the collective bargaining uh, agreement for the collective bargaining agreement with the Bridgewater Fire uh, Association, the terms of the new contract, very simple, very minor changes. Uh, one is the addition of Juneteenth as a town holiday, which the council uh, knows because the council voted that uh, about a year ago. Um, and then in terms of compensation, the uh, fire department, each fire department member that was uh, <clears throat> employed during the pandemic will receive a one-time $3,500 stipend. Um, and the uh, terms of the uh, three-year contract, uh, which are effective July 1st, 2021. So there'll be a retro payment, uh, but it's a 1.75 increase, a 2% increase, and a 2% increase over three years. And in addition, um, an increase in the detail rate uh, to $60 per hour from $40 per hour, $60 per hour gets us uh, about average uh, for the uh, area. So that is, uh, those are the terms. And uh, in the future, I apologize for the, the actual copy of the MOA, MOU was not in your packet, but in the future, we will do that. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Dutton. Uh, I note that the uh, Budget and Finance Committee and Finance Committees have each uh, uh, approved recommendations uh, in connection with this order. I would entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Thank you. And is there a discussion? Seeing none, I would ask for a voice vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No, no, no one is in opposition. I thank you very much. Uh, order FY22-068. Contractual settlement for the Bridgewater Firefighters Association. And one more time, if I may, please, uh, Mr. Dutton. Thank you, Mr. President. This is the uh, first year funding of the new contract and uh, it's a total of $150,000. Thank you very much. Once again, the uh, budget and finance and finance committees have voted uh, approval and I would uh, entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. <laughs> Thank you very much. And is there any discussion on the matter? Seeing none, I would ask you to please uh, vote in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No one. I thank you much. And we move on to uh, resolution FY22 uh, 009 a resolution supporting the fair share amendment. Um, insofar as the sponsor of this resolution is not present at the council meeting this evening, uh, and at his request, I'd entertain a motion to postpone final consideration of this matter until our next regular session on June 7th. I'll second that for discussion. Uh, I'll make the initial motion, that's fine. A motion and a second. Yeah, Thank you very much. Is there a discussion? Yeah, I'll just I'll just raise up the point that you're bringing up, which is in our own rules and procedures, we have this in here to protect the sponsor from having any changes or any other actions that the sponsor might not be able to speak about. And so this is the correct action. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Wood. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, I'll ask for a voice vote in approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Then we will consider this matter finally at our next session on June 7th. Thank you. Um, may I ask through you to the, to the attorney? Never mind. Never mind. I was going to ask a procedure, but I just answered my own question with my comments, so I can't do that. So never mind. Fair enough. Yes. <laughs> um, old business. We have no old business. New business. We have uh, two matters before us this evening. The first is um, 
the uh, water system development charges. This is order FY22-069. And uh, uh, I would ask the town manager to uh, uh, kindly offer his comments. Certainly, Mr. President, this, uh, and I, I would certainly recommend uh, uh, referring this to the finance committee and the budget and finance committee, but this, this uh, is the result of a lot of work um, over the last several months uh, to determine and, and try to calculate uh, how <clears throat> a methodology, excuse me, a methodology that the town can use to consistently uh, apply uh, water rates, presumably water increases over the years, uh, following years, um, and, and do it in a rash, <clears throat> excuse me, a rational and systematic basis. So, so it's really asking the council, uh, FY22069 is really asking the council to uh, adopt a methodology uh, with which we can set water rates uh, now and in, in the future. So I, I certainly would recommend uh, a ro robust discussion of this, uh, but I certainly would recommend that at the Budget and Finance and Finance Committee. Um, we, we have already asked our uh, consultant who has worked with us quite closely over the last few months uh, on this to attend uh, both those meetings uh, and then the follow-up uh, council meeting uh, before this is actually voted. So I would, I would encourage the referral. Thank you, Mr. Dutton. Uh, I would uh, entertain a motion for referral to the Budget and Finance and Finance Committees. So moved. Second. <laughs> We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I just have one qu procedural question, Mr. Mr. President, Gallagher. if I could, through you to the town manager. These two orders, um, Mr. Dutton, they do not require a public hearing. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. They do not. Actually. That is correct. correct. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, thank you. And a final matter for our consideration this evening. I could find it. Too much paper in support of this last uh, item. Water <laughs> rates. Um, order FY22-070, uh, water rates. And uh, I would defer one more time to the town manager for comment. Thank you. This, uh, the water rates is the follow up to the methodology. So uh, assuming that the, the council gets to uh, consensus around the methodology, and if it's the methodology that has uh, been suggested to us and that uh, we have worked on over the last few months, then uh, the water rates uh, would uh, be as, as they are here attached. So again, I'd encourage that referral to um, budget and finance and finance committee. Thank you, Mr. Dutton. And I would entertain a motion for a referral. So moved for second. Thank you. Uh, any comment at all? Mr. Uh, I'll just say that uh, we're probably gonna meet on the Monday before the meeting, which I think is the sixth. Is that right? Yep. Or is it the seventh? It'll be the sixth. So it'll be so if we can just schedule that now, it'll be the sixth at six thirty. Six six. Six, six, Monday the sixth at six. Six, six at six. There we go. Well, that's that's, gonna devilish, go that's a devilish day. Numbers. Devilish day. Thank you for that observation. <laughs> uh, did we vote? I've forgotten. Uh, uh, I think we no, we were just in my comments. We got a first and a second. Oh. I think we need a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, I thank you. And um, we, uh, we come to citizen comments for the evening. And uh, if there are any citizens, uh, uh, yes, please, Mr. Baumgarten. I'm still a citizen. I'm still Sam Baumgarten. I'm still at 60 Short Street. But I, this is just an off the cuff thing that I thought of tonight. A couple of weeks ago, when you came back in person, um, I noticed that sometimes it was hard to hear at home or on Facebook. And I sent a note to Mr. Rushton, and I think he made a suggestion about speaking into the microphones. Because even though these are good microphones, when you start doing this in your seat and you're talking from here, it may still, it isn't even well heard here when you move away. So, and definitely not at home. 
on Facebook or uh, BTV when you sit away from the mic. So I just wanted to kind of plant that in your minds again, that when you speak to just sit up so we can all hear. Thank you. That's a good comment. I think that's very uh, appropriate. And I'm glad you've reminded us of that. Thank you, sir. Uh, seeing no other uh, citizen comments, uh, we have no executive session scheduled for this evening. Uh, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. Can we give so, council, council comments? comments? Oh, I'm sorry. We've got a lot to say. <laughs> Mr. President wants out of here. I, I'm just afraid that you might. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll go to council comments, and uh, I'd like to begin with Councilor Perry. Well, all right. Um, uh, number one, I uh, just uh, as a point of information, is there any Memorial Day activities going on this weekend? I'd like to just uh, have that brought on up uh, for the for the public. Uh, do we have that information, Mr. President? Yes, uh, I, I am aware that, in fact, um, uh, a ceremony uh, of commemoration is scheduled for uh, Memorial Day morning. Uh, I believe, uh, Deborah, do we do we know for sure the time? I, I think it was at usually 10 a.m. on the town common, uh, and uh, I will be present. I, I hope that uh, uh, council members can join me, and I'm looking forward to a, uh, a very solemn remembrance. And uh, I thank you for bringing that up. Yep, yep. Yeah, I just wanted yeah, to get that information out. Uh, certainly, we'll be there, and hope uh, others can come as well. Um, so, I just want to certainly wish everyone a very happy and safe Memorial Day weekend. That's all I got. Thank you very much. Very good. I thank you. Uh, I would ask next, please, uh, Councillor Moore. Um, I would actually just echo the same comments, uh, wishing everyone a, a safe weekend. Um, no additional comments. Thanks. Very good. I thank you. And Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I too hope every hope all of us as councillors can can come out to the common uh, Monday morning at ten o'clock to um, remember those that have given the ultimate sacrifice. That's what Memorial Day is all about. And um, I appreciate the veterans and the work that's been done putting and displaying all the flags around the town. It looks, it looks very nice. Um, and I hope to see the public out as well on Monday. The, the crowd seem to have been getting smaller and smaller. I know we haven't done a full blown um, memorial service in a couple of years, but we're trying, trying to get back in stride. And I just hope if people have the time, they can come out. Thank you. Well, thank you, Councillor, and uh, Councillor Wood. All right, thank you. Um, yes, I hope everybody has a nice weekend also. Yeah. It's good to kick off the summer. We had a taste of it this past weekend, and then suddenly the heat was on again. Um, you know, I brought up the, the comments about the uh, rules and procedures, I believe, fully in them, so it's right that we didn't take action on the resolution tonight, and I want to spend just a couple minutes talking about that, because I may not be here at the next meeting, so when the resolution for the fair share comes up, um, I may not be able at that point to talk about it. And I wanted to just to talk about it for a couple of minutes here in my council comments. Um, what you have at your table is what I was going to propose tonight as an amendment to the fair share amend, uh, amendment. Um, you know, we represent Bridgewater. We don't represent Massachusetts. We don't represent some of these urban communities that are voting in favor of the resolution. We don't, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, in that depth, um, we don't represent truly the grassroots of Rise Up um, Massachusetts, which is statewide. We represent Bridgewater. And so when I added these, these amendments, proposals, these were, you know, it doesn't affect how the item gets, but it gives our, our opinion of what we think the money should be used for. So I said, you know, the whereas the budget doesn't fully fund the chapter 70 foundational formula is true. And where our special education programs are not funded 100% by state budget, true. And where sped uh, transportation mandates aren't fully funded, true. Um, and the regional transportation costs are never fully funded and they should be. And where many of us believe that a two years associate degree should be tuition free, kind of as an entry point into that more costly education that even Bridgewater State University is a pretty costly education. So under the therefore, you know, I basically said as a statement, this is what we should have as an opinion for a council. So if we're going to support the resolution, um, I would hope that maybe someone would, would bring up these points. Otherwise, it's the boilerplate 
of what Rise Up Massachusetts is trying to project as, as the message. Um, one, of the, one of the new things at work that I really like when people say is TL, uh, TLDR, which is for, short for too long, didn't read. As in the report was too long, didn't read it. Or the tax code is too long, didn't read it. Or the details about, about the fair share amendment are too long, didn't read it. And I think that when people see the initial message, they're enticed to think, oh, we're going to have all this revenue that's going to be used just for education and just for transportation and just for infrastructure. But when you read the other arguments, it will the revenue isn't going to be pocketed toward those things. It will join the general fund revenue and just be used as general, general, you know, uh, general fund items. Um, people conflate the information about wealth and income, and they think wealth equals income. And in fact, if you read through the documentation that Rise Up Massachusetts provides, they highlight billionaires and other wealthy people, but that doesn't equate to income. And Article 44 on the Constitution is about taxation. It's not about how much wealth you have. If you read further, there's some history about the Article 44 and I'm gonna quote one of the web services I found, and, it, and I believe it to be true. I found it in a couple of different places. Basically the drafters of article 44 back in 1915 objected to playing one class against another and, and dividing Americans by elevating personal in, income over, over common good. And so one of the common goods that isn't mentioned anywhere in the, in the items that Rise of America promotes is public safety and public safety is also an important and sometimes under, underfunded um, item, as, as we've talked about today in some of the contracts. You know, public safety, we, we're just paying an increase in contracts for our fire department, and there'll probably be one for the police department too. So, so revenue enhancements include all aspects of the budget, not just the, the couple pieces. Um, I, personally, you know, there's it says that the state house can't take action to set this tax rate themselves. Mm -hmm. And yet they were able to bifurcate the capital gains tax into two different classes, a short-term capital gains at 5%, which joins regular income and a 12% capital gains, which is uh, for our short-term is 12% and long-term is 5% under regular income. And yet, you know, if we look at the way this is implemented and it doesn't say how it's gonna be implemented, you know, it doesn't say in the Article 44 that you can't bifurcate income ranges and tax differently. Um, and then finally, you know, this, this, when you start reading about some of these pieces and how they're going to be used, it's kind of the rainbow and unicorn effect. Oh, we're going to have free tuition. We're going to have free rides on buses. We're going to have new buses. We're going to have great sidewalks and, you know, all for $2 billion a year. When you do the math, 4% of 2 billion, and when you dig down into it, the number is actually 1.86 billion, not 2 billion, it's rounded up for document, for you know, the posters. That's $50 billion of taxation, new taxation, that would take effect on this. So who does that affect? Does it affect the 19 billionaires? Yeah, it does affect, but it also affects the small business owner that's worked for his life to build up his dentist office or whatever, Maybe he bought his building, maybe he's done well over the years, and maybe that's his retirement income instead of having a huge 401 where someplace else. When he goes to sell those assets, he might break the threshold of the million dollars. That's who is going to be affected. It's 19,000 people under the, under the report. Again, TLDR, you got to dig down into, into details. It's 19,000 people that they say would be affected by this but it's 19,000 people that are not affected by the tax today and would take evasive action to avoid that tax in the future. I do my own taxes to learn how taxes work and I organize my, my sales and whatnot to, to best match my, my needs, not, not general tax needs. And that'll happen here too. People move to Florida, et cetera. So I think it's a, a huge overstatement for what is gonna come out of this. And it's gonna affect a lot of um, maybe upper middle class, but small business owners more than billionaires. And that's not the common good that I think 
the resolution calls for. So if I were here next time, I'll, you know, I would have said these things, I would have made the amendments, I'll probably not be here. Um, you know, do with it what you will. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Mr. Wood, and thank you. Those are very um, uh, thoughtful comments. I know that you've done a good deal of research into the matter, uh, and uh, you certainly should be acknowledged for that, and, and I thank you. Um, the um, only comment I'll, I'll, I'll make is that um, I did have an opportunity to have a one-hour meeting until your comments. Uh, I'm sorry, but um, that opportunity is gone. Uh, I probably will never see that opportunity again. Uh, I had a side bet on that, sorry. But I, uh, I do thank you. Um, I, I guess I've begun my own comments. Um, I, I thank everyone for your attendance tonight. It's been uh, uh, certainly, I think, a very productive meeting, uh, although reasonably short. And... Um, uh, there are many, many comments that I would echo now with respect to the upcoming Memorial Day holiday. Um, I will join the group assembled on the town common on uh, Monday morning, and I, I certainly hope many of you can as well. Uh, and many residents uh, of town who uh, uh, would be available, I hope, to uh, uh, partake as well. One last final comment is that um, uh, between now and our next meeting on June 7th, uh, uh, an important ceremony will take place, and that is the graduation day for our Bridgewater Raynham uh, seniors. And uh, I just wanted to extend a special congratulatory note to uh, all the graduating students uh, and to their families. Uh, you know, we certainly take a lot of pride in what they've accomplished as well they should and, and as well. And I think that um, uh, the event that will be hosted will be very um, uh, very successful and enjoyable and uh, my best of luck uh, uh, to all of them. If there are no other comments, I would um, entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. And second. Any discussion? Not on adjournment. Seeing none, I thank you. We are adjourned. Oh, vote. oh why don't we in favor, please. Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Seeing none. Thank you. One day I'll oppose that. <laughs> See what happens.